OK, so if you're planning to vote in next month's council elections in England, you'd better make sure that you take some photo ID with you. For the first time in the UK, you will need to show ID or you won't be allowed to cast your vote. And about time too, I say. But the government says it will help to tackle electoral fraud. But it was reported last week that just one person was cautioned for the offence last year. Senior Tory MP David Davis has criticised the new law. To discuss this further, I'm now joined by lecturer in British politics at the University of Liverpool, Dr David Jeffrey, and political commentator Matt Stadlin. Good stuff. OK. Um, right, I will start with... I'm just going to... I normally go ladies first, but I can't today, can I? I'm going to go with you, Dr David, if that's all right. Do you think that people should be made to pack their ID if they want to vote? Uh, I think it's pretty much a solution looking for a problem. I mean, in theory, yes, it makes sense that we should be checking that people are who they say they are when they go to vote. But in reality, the, the level of, um, of people identified as having voting fraudulently is very, very low as to be immaterial, according to a, a parliamentary report on the topic. So whereas I agree with you about what you said at the start, that, you know, it seems like it, it's common sense and lots of other places, for example, Labour Party selection meetings require photo ID. Hmm. It's still solving a problem that doesn't actually exist, in, in my opinion. Uh, Matt, I'll, I'll bring it over to you now. I mean, if I need to show ID to buy a deck of fags at Tesco, surely it's reasonable for me to show an ID to vote. Yeah, I get, I get where you're coming from, Patrick. And on the face of it, it makes some sort of sense. The problem is that it will or might disenfranchise huge numbers of people. I was looking on, online just before coming on air this afternoon, and I think 8 million people in this country do not have a passport. Now, a passport is, is one of the forms of ID that you can use to prove that you are who you are when you go to vote from May onwards. There are plenty of others, and people should absolutely look them up because I want people to get out and vote, whether you're voting Tory, Labour, whoever you want to vote for. It's a, almost a democratic duty to go and do that. So I'd encourage people to do that. The worry is there'll be plenty of people not watching this show, mm. breaking news, sorry, Patrick, I'm sure there are lots who are, but there'll be people who aren't watching this show, who aren't reading The Mirror or The Guardian or whoever else is kicking up a stink mm. about this. My concern is that they won't get out to vote because, as your other contributor absolutely rightly said, mm. this isn't really a problem. This is a solution looking for a problem in a way. It's sort of turning things up upside down, and, mm. and that's my big concern. If you're being cynical about this, this is mm. an attempt by the Conservatives to drive down turnout because the sorts of people who might no. not have ID are I'm, more likely to be Labour supporters than they are Tory supporters. Well, why, why is that, Matt? Sorry, sorry, I will come back to you, David, but I want to know, why is that more likely that it will be Labour voters who don't have ID? It's thought that people who are less well-off, less privileged are less likely to have a passport. That sort of makes some sort of sense. And it's thought, but I can't say this conclusively, it's thought that those people are more likely to be sympathetic towards left-leaning parties, mm. towards right. Labour, than they are to the Conservatives. That's what I've read. That's Whether the anecdote. That I get that. True, I, I can't confirm well, this, But this is, this is the problem, isn't it? Whether or not it's true. But I, I do understand. I, do, I get the logic behind that, at least. So I, I, I'm, I'm preparing for the Twitter backlash already, Matt. But there we go. Uh, David, I'll, I'll, I'll bring you in on this now. Look, you mentioned before that maybe it was a, a solution looking for a problem. But isn't part of the problem that until we've come up with a solution, we won't be able to identify it? By definition, voter fraud, you're not exactly going to be sitting there waiting to get caught, are you? Unlike, of course, the rather notorious case of Tower Hamlets. No, exactly. And I mean, I think the point that uh, your other contributor just made is is also relevant, right? That there are correlations to Labour voting and the people who are less likely to have uh, photo ID, but it's important to say that people can apply for free for a, mm. a voter ID as well. So, you know, if they haven't got one, they should be they should be getting that now. And you're completely right, of course. The point is that we don't have statistics after the fact saying all of mm. these people successfully defrauded the electoral system. Um, I think from my perspective, it would have been nice for the government to focus on other issues with the with the system that we have. So people who aren't on the roll, for instance, is a massive kind of gap in in our kind of political or electoral system. Mm. Um, but I'd like to see that if this is a system that we're going to go with, like they have in Northern Ireland, uh, that we do it properly. All right, Matt, I can see you're itching to get involved. Go on. Yeah, I just want to give you one qu quick example that works against what I've been saying, which is that when my grandmother and my great-grandmother 
arrived in the UK as refugees, effectively from the Nazis from Vienna. Mm. They were they both had the same name, Hedy Stadlin, Hedvig Stadlin. And my mm. great grandmother went to vote in good faith and voted, but it turned out that she hadn't actually been naturalised. So when my grandmother went to vote, she also was called Hedy Stadlin, and they said, "I'm sorry, you've already voted." And she said, "No, I haven't voted." And it was because there were two Hedy Stadlins, and only one of them was entitled mm. to vote. And the wrong Hedy Stadlin had voted, and she'd voted for the Liberals, whereas my grandmother had oh. wanted to vote for Labour. So she was I, very upset. I was going to say it wouldn't have been a problem if they both wanted to vote for the same party, but I imagine that was a that was a row uh, that, 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 that that erupted. Uh, look, David, just final one to you on this one now. Some people might be saying, look, if you cannot be bothered to get a free voter ID, OK, and then you're probably not going to want to vote anyway. So, so what's the point? I, I just feel like why should our political system run the risk of being rigged for the benefit of potentially lazy and or corrupt people, Dr David? Can you see it from that angle? Um, I'm not sure I'd say corrupt, but I do think there's something to be said for the idea that, you know, people should people should get some form of ID uh, to vote. I think it generally my sympathies are with you, right? I think it's something that we should have for, for confidence in the system rather than necessarily saying let anybody... When I was a student, for instance, I was offered, you know, they, they read out the names of the people registered at my house. I could have chose any of mm. them and then come back later. Um, so I do, I'd like to see this system put in. I'd like to see it done properly as well. But I think that means making the opportunities to get the voter ID much more widespread to the people okay. who, who are going to miss out. All right, both of you, thank you very, very much. Great stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed it. University of Liverpool's uh, British politics lecturer there, Dr David Jeffrey, and political commentator Matt Stadlin as well.